It's urgent because loneliness is a signal to the mind and body. It's a psychophysiological signal. Just like when you're hungry, it's a signal to your mind and body, get something to eat because you need food. If you're thirsty, get something to drink. You need something to drink. When you're lonely, you need connection with other people. We are social animals. And already before this catastrophe and the failure to handle it, one in four Americans had no one to talk to, even in the worst crisis in their lives. So we're talking about a terrible problem. The most popular program in the United States are the 12-step programs. Millions of people are in them. You're not allowed to go to meetings. You can't be feeling the connection with those other people at meetings. There are some meetings on the internet, it's not the same. Connection is necessary for people and it's physical connection, it's physical proximity. The brain has to work much harder to connect with people on media than it does with people physically. Would you advocate getting people together and then having that social spacing of six to 10 feet, it would still be worth it in order to cope with the mental health? Of course. And if we did what Sweden did, knowing that young people and older people end up being alone, building a vast number of apartments with very small private compartments and big shared space so that pe people could see a film sitting six feet apart. Right, the way that I noticed the, the, the reporters, when there's a press conference, Mr. Trump stands at the front and the reporters sit in every third or fourth seat so of that course. there's an appropriate safe distance, but at least they can get together and function. And, and if you did that for the president's news conference, why couldn't you do that for the society as a whole? Of course, you could have little microphones at every seat and have a discussion. You could have a presentation and a discussion, whether it was about what's going on here that makes people so afraid and lonely or whatever it is, because we need something called a, a biochemical that we produce called oxytocin. It makes people feel comfort and pleasure. It comes from physical touching. It's not something you buy at a, you know, like Oxycontin at a drugstore. It's something you get through physical touch. And whether that physical touch was putting the money in someone's hand at the store or physical touch with a hug or somebody saying, good going and hitting you on the shoulder or physical touch from holding hands with someone you like or shaking their hand it's an enormous physical need and people are doing without it. And, and that has anxiety is created and anxiety leads to all sorts of problems. People are already becoming more obese because they're feeding their, themselves, they're eating their hearts out in loneliness. And diabetes leads to heart trouble and all sorts of other problems. And so the, if I understand you, we all know that depression is a major problem major. in American society. I can tell you from economics literature, it's a major problem in how people work, the quality of the work they do, the quantity, the number of times they're absent from work. The impact on the economy of worsening the depression people have is not even mentioned, and yet it could in the end be one of the most profound consequences, not only of the failure to prepare for the pandemic, but the failure to come up with ways that might have compensated for the additional loneliness that was produced. Because one of the things that happens with depression is a person sinks into themselves and they can't think of anyone else and they can't communicate with other people so that it feeds on itself. And depression is a pattern that can happen. And that's very, very dangerous. I know you're not charged with this. I wish you were. I know there's no one talking about it. What can you tell our audience? What are some of the things that could be done, might be done to begin to cope with these mental health consequences that are getting too little attention? To try and first of all, try to understand that there's nothing wrong with you personally, that being isolated is a terrible condition and that you need to do whatever you can about it. You need to communicate 
with whoever is close to you on the internet, on the telephone, on anything you have. And you need to under, you need to say, there's, this is not a punishment sent by God because I'm bad. This is a disease and understand how it happened and talk to people. Talk to people, have contact with people. If you live with someone, hug them, hold them, give each other physical touch and physical comfort. If you don't, reach out however you can. Reach out by having friends have a discussion on the internet, on Google chat or whatever, where they share feelings and needs and reactions to this crisis.